Township Supreme Friendship Supreme Finding the Geek Within Hey everybody, my name's Michael. My name's Cleve. And welcome back to another exciting episode of Friendship Supreme. Where the podcast that dares to ask, what was X going to give to you? He, he already gave so much. <laughs> he did give a lot, man. By the end of it, he gave so much. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about DMX passing away. Uh, unfortunately, uh, movies, songs, so on. Uh, I, I wouldn't say like I was devastated when i heard the news but i was really sad to hear that he had passed away agreed i think he's one of the first musical artists that since prince i think he is one of the musical artists that i was really sad about other than like tragic ones there was a country duo that one of the members crashed in a airplane and and then there was a the the rapper the mf doom that passed away like he had passed away in October, but nobody found out about it until 2021 or right before 2021. And then, uh, yeah, but I think this one had a huge impact, though, on everything. He was ev- he he wasn't necessarily everywhere, but his music was everywhere. He was like before Jay Z was intertwined with a lot of pop culture. He, I feel like he, I mean, he wasn't as big of a mogul as Jay Z. Don't come at me. But uh, no, I think no, that, like, he was in movies and he was on TV a lot. And, like, he was just a part of a lot of things happening before that was popular to be doing. Yeah. He had his and own movie. He had a couple movies. Well, I'm sorry. He, I think he had two that he was, like, the main character of, though. That I can think of also, yes, two. Cradle of the Grave and I don't think he was the main one in Romeo Must Die. Uh, I have it pulled up somewhere. Hold on. See, because I think that I'm thinking of a movie you're not even thinking of. Let's see. Romeo Must Die, Cradle of the Grave, Last Hour. Wait, wait, maybe it was Romeo Must Die. Oh, it was Romeo Must Die. So Romeo Must Die was the other one I was thinking of him being uh, uh, main character. So it was him and Jet Li. See, I was thinking of there's a movie uh, called Belly. In 1998, where he was like, it was him and I believe Nas, who were in the movie together, and they were. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not even gonna begin to try to tell you what Nas. the movie is about. And but, T-Boz. yeah, and yeah. Method Man. But uh, it was. You'll be forgiven for not knowing about it, Michael, because it was a. The two, I, the two, like I have committed to a memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cradle of the Grave and Romeo Must Die. Like well, and. Billy was like a real, real black movie. Like, <laughs> with no, no nice Look, man. I've it seen was, some movies. You, you have. I just, that one's like a. Nah, I don't think I've even heard of it. Um, it, it was on my house. It, it, it was uh, available for my house in VHS. And I know it wasn't the case everywhere. <laughs> so there's only so many reasons people would own that movie. Anyway. Uh, um, I, I remember owning. Uh, Cradle of the Grave specifically and watching it many times. Um, Romeo Must Die, I remember watching and then being like, I can live without this one again. Because it was so good? Uh, Cradle of the Grave, I thought was an amazing movie. I thought it was really well done. Uh, also, you know, at any point in time that you trick a, a crackhead into sh- or a heroin addict to shoot up, you know, battery acid into their body so that they then seize up and die, is, I mean, that's education for a what 12 13 year old you got him i do i was trying to think of who it was that was in it. it was gabriel union but i did not remember anthony anderson being in it at all uh yeah not, i mean he, and he had a lot of small little cameos too there was some movie with chris rock that he played himself and he was like just in the prison cell with him i cannot think of life me with the cb4 if Chris Rock was in prison, it was probably CB4. It, w- it wasn't CB4. <laughs> Damn it. I fucking love that movie so much. Of course you do. <laughs> CB4. God, I'm going to go out to watch that one. 
I know this is off topic. I'm gonna keep it in here, but uh, today I saw um, a, at the Denton Community Market, I saw a man that had a bunch of artwork that he had drawn up of the Last Dragon. This man was the most impressed when I was like, "Fucking love that movie!" And then I just started talking to him about it because you know that's a gem. <sighs> if you ever also another the Last also Dragon, another black movie, it. go watch it now. <laughs> also another black movie. I. Uh, you know what? Like, not the biggest fan of my dad. We know that. Mm. But his taste in movies wasn't terrible when I was young. <laughs> it just well, wasn't. You, you gotta have something to go with. You remember? I'm gonna get you, sucker. It's yeah, one. Get you, sucker. <laughs> remember what he? Never mind. Anyways, DMX or Earl Simmons. I didn't know that uh, uh, DMX ever stood for something. I mean, I'm sure that it did. I never memorized what it was. Dark also, Man was... X. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I... <laughs> you know what else he was in that he needs to be applauded for? Was uh, Def Jam. Def Jam Vendetta. He was in Def Jam. And the, the movie with Chris <laughs> Rock was Top 5. That was the name oh, of the okay, movie. Sorry. Top five. Oh, yeah, we were there. CB4, Top 5. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just, let's see. Top 5 came out in 2014. <laughs> Don't worry about CB4 then. Uh, CB4 was in 1993. A slight difference. You know, you do what you do. But I mean, obviously, musically, he was a lot more popular. And he was in everything. Fucking Rick and Morty used him. He was, Deadpool uh, used him. He was, uh, he was rough, too, with his lyrics. <sighs> So I started listening to a little bit of songs while I was kind of getting ready for this uh, episode. Just, like you know, re-familiarizing myself. Yeah, for sure. I uh, listened to Where the Hood At. Where the Hood, Where the Hood, Where the Hood At. Yeah. yeah. Um, way more. <laughs> Can I go now? Tell me where to go. Um, way more homophobic than I remember her. <laughs> Like, to do the, the defense whole, of that, the whole first verse was like, sleep with men, huh? Huh, gay boy? I'm like, whoa, easy. Not to defend it, but I feel like that was really popular in rap music. In fact, we like, there are nowadays uh, rap artists that are like, man, why did rap music hate gay people? And like, I don't know why they attacked the gay community. I guess it was easy and emasculating. I mean, as as older black men, that was like the like you shouldn't be. I don't know. Well, I mean, Eminem did it. Like, yeah. Again, you know, cancel culture is already trying to take out Eminem for other shit. But like that man it was, was fucking brutal about homosexuality. Yeah, but then he did the song with Elton John. Everybody was cool about it. Um, I think but, he called him an, the f word. Yeah, but then he performed with him, and then they hugged at the end. You don't, you don't remember? That doesn't make it better. That's like, like everybody else. Everybody yeah. else took it. Like everybody's like Mark Wahlberg. He's an okay guy. He's done some shit. He still fucked up an Asian guy and said, "I fucking hate Vietnamese people." Like that was still a thing. Work, He's still work, a work. racist piece of shit. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah, I, I think, and what was big about DMX to me was that he rapped a lot about like his pain and kind of what he went through. And as minorities, well, I'll, I'll say it, as, as black men, that's usually the last thing any black man talks about it. Well, especially back then was emotionally what you were going through when his music was coming out for him to rap about, you know, the hardship, a lot of them did it, but it was like very rare. Well, a lot of nineties ish rap music was, what we make fun of rap for being nowadays, like bitches, like, knows, yeah. bitches get money, do drugs, and he wasn't talking about that a lot of the time. Like I don't but, disagree with those topics, <laughs> but it's nice when it's about a little bit more. Uh, also, I believe the uh, Biker Boys movie used him on their soundtrack. So, uh, Rough Riders it, the anthem Rough Riders anthem there? because everybody used the Rough Riders anthem. <laughs> if you go to IMDb, and it, what category is it? Is it 
Yes, soundtrack. You get a long list of of uh, titles from 1995 to today, <laughs> like 2021. It's just the second one from the top is Hamilton. I know. So did they sample from him? Meet me inside as Earl Simmons. So maybe it was like he remixed the song or like because I've seen where Bust Rhymes is like in it too, where they they perform the song outside of the play. Mm. Like kind of moderate modernize it a little bit more. Um um, yeah, it's it is a long, long, long list. And the Rough Riders anthem, man, that was where it was at. Rough Riders anthem is uh, the moment that that comes on is uh, immediately recognized. I don't think and, you any anybody doesn't recognize that song. And another very popular one was what these bitches want. Which was <laughs> we don't need to go into all the lyrics, but that one was a another really super popular one. Uh, but I, I think uh, it's frustrating. The one that I think might have been the top of his popularity. It's a tie for me, either party up or X gonna give it to you. Those were the two powerhouses that everyone used. Y'all go make me act a fool up in here. Like everybody said that. I DJed MMA uh, and did like intro songs. Mm -hmm. And I had like, just because a lot of the fighters came with their own music, but I always had like an out, like just a stack, like, hey, this is what's in these CDs. And I think like 75% of the time, if someone needed to pick a song, it was that. Yeah. Because people, people like that. It's I was, time to fuck someone up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it was a song that was like, "Look, I'm really trying to be cool, but you're gonna piss me the fuck off, and it's not gonna be good for you." Mm-mm. Uh, real quick correction: it was um, not "Romeo Must Die" that I was upset at. I apologize. It was Never Die Alone. That movie was supposed to be like almost a sequel to Cradle of the Grave, and it wasn't great. It was. I remember that one. Um, but anyways, uh, now that I read the synopsis of Romeo Must Die, that one was actually not bad. Anytime you throw Jet Li in a movie, I'm not mad at it. It's going to be... Did he do two movies with Jet Li? Mm-hmm. Of course he did. The... The... We Right Here and Who We Be... I feel like are lesser known, but who we be, I enjoyed a lot. I don't know if you remember that song or not. No. I'm not gonna sing it for you. Okay. But um one thing I've uh have been reminded of is that it's really hard for me to sing any of his songs. Mm, yes. <laughs> I think you might be able to get away with who we be as I'm scrolling up and down, but there's a lyric. Let me see if I can find it. If I can spell correctly. Yeah, so there's a part where he says, my mother, my father, I love him, I hate him. Wish God I didn't have him, but I'm glad that he made him. I'm like, that's not something that a lot of people are comfortable with talking about, will end up talking about. I'm going to do that song, because that song... He oh, and that's that that song right there is peak, not peak, but like prime DMX gravelly, oh aggressive, goodness. putting his shit in it voice, and it is good. And then uh, we right here, which is, it it sounds like it'd be an aggressive song, but it's a bit more timid than I think that you would expect it to be. I believe I remember that song. Yeah, you got to be sad when a guy passed away who has 15 kids, man. Yeah. And and he's 50. He um we're le- we're less than 20 years outside of that and he's gone. 15 kids with nine different women. It was a different time, Michael. Just just, just want to make sure that, that was out there. 
the educational protection wasn't as strong as it is now. That's fair. There was no, there was no plan fair. B pill. That's so and fair. honestly, if a big rapper got, oh man, if a big rapper got me pregnant, they're probably hanging on to that. There was, um, you know, one person got one point five million dollars for it. I mean, I mean, obviously, not all the women were like. I'm going to trap this man and try to get his money from him, but I'm sure that, well, I don't I want to be on it. I don't really know about any of them, but that is a lot of women and a lot of, well, mathematically. Like, <laughs> like, and I think Do he you had, remember? No, go ahead. I think some of them were relatively younger. Do you remember? Maybe. Yeah. Do you remember his, um, his beef with uh, Ja Rule? I do remember his beef with Jarrell. And he came out with the diss truck, uh, they want more? I oh. always imagined that if DMX ever got his hands on Ja Rule, that he would just annihilate him. Because to me, my personal opinion, how I've always seen it, Ja Rule is the softest rapper alive. <laughs> Don't forget we sometimes consider... No. No. Drake. Drake's got to be softer than Ja Rule. I think that Drake could brawl, though. Drake ain't throwing hands. Ja Rule just sounds tough. You know you what Mac... Well, he's dead now. Never mind. I won't bring him in. What was what was Ja Rule's thing? He always did a thing. I can't remember what it was. God, what was it? I could just put one song on and hear it, but I, then I'd have to play a Ja Rule song. Um, I enjoy this man bark to people constantly. And it wasn't was terrifying. It, here's the thing. It was something that he could do that is just fucking dumb if anybody else does it. But he right, can do it and you don't question it. It's like your epitome of like intimidation. The fact that I'm like barking at you and it, it's scary. Not like, oh shit, look at this tweaker coming at me. It's like, oh fuck, don't go, right. don't go near that guy. And now it's not like anybody could do it because we're like, oh, that's the, you're doing the DMX thing. Gotcha. It's not scary when you do it. It's it's only really scary when he does it. I was listening to one song, and he was like, I'm the only rapper that can go into the hood right now and have no problems. I, I can go into the hood by myself and have no problems. And I'm like, yeah. You, pro- you, you look like you've thrown down. I don't question that at all. Uh, he's also yacked, like, or at least in his prime. The man rapped every day without a shirt on and was just fucking stacked. So he was intimidating at all times. Um, I think one of the important things is that he was super religious, which unfortunately also in the 90s, religion definitely pushed against homo- homo- homosexuality, which could also speak to why it was such an issue. But um, yeah, not defending the homophobic stuff. Cause yeah. I, that's not you know, defendable, but I, I just... Um, and it's a struggle too because in the in the black community it is often passed down that it's it's such a negative thing right and the the old black men just kind of pass that down to their kids and I know people who you know are big tough black guys and who are like no fuck that shit my kids not gonna be and you know it's I I can only assume and hope that if their kids were to come out, that that would Still wash away. But I don't know. I know that uh, Will Smith is super supportive of his kids. Oh yeah, Constantly. and Jaden Jaden's now like he's he's all about Jaden wearing dresses and shit. And well, and that's I, not that's just like a fashion statement. I feel like he's like come out and said he's not cross dressing. He just wants to wear dresses or something. No, no, no. He was the face of like a women's clothing line, and they paid him and shit, and he fucking flaunted it and made money. So yeah, good on you. Uh, and, and you know that's it, that's another thing where it's it's not a good excuse because these men are relatively, if not the same age. But, you know, I also don't know. No, I, I don't know if anybody checked on his views once he got past 25. You know what I mean? Like right. He didn't get a chance to mature and people still ask him, like, 
hey, do you right. feel, how do you feel about that? Like, he didn't continue his career in rapping. At, at 48, it's not like someone was like, are you still home for make Or they did. I don't know. But Maybe. I, I, <clears throat> the music's there and it's not going to go away. And that's one of his more popular songs. But who's to say that this band didn't change from point A to point B? Did you know he re-signed with uh, Def Jam in 2019? I did not. Which is his him reuniting with the label for the first time since 2003. 16 su- years later, you, you came in and you're like, all right, we good. Not surprising. I, I think I remember them not ending on great terms. No, that was, yeah. Um, he went to jail a lot. Yeah, he. I'm, has, I'm only he bringing up these demons. things because people are gonna say like, "Oh, this is the stuff about him." You know how people love to drudge shit up, but like, yeah, I mean, who didn't go to fucking jail anymore? And and he had some demons. I mean, you can't yeah. get past it because, I mean, he passed away from a drug overdose. Yeah. Well, he had a drug overdose, and then uh, like a subsequent and... heart attack. So uh, it it was it just went bad for him health wise. I think he was in he was in the hospital from Friday, April 2nd till he passed away on the 9th. So a full week in the hospital. Uh, just to point out like how religious he was, he was trying to become a pastor. Like he wanted to become ordained. He was a deacon. Uh, it started in like 2009. Uh, w- one of the craziest quotes that I think I've ever read from this man was... Um, I came here to, this is about being in jail, by the way, I came here to meet somebody, don't know who it was, but I'll know when I see him. And when I, when I can't, or, and I came here to give him a message and that man message is Jesus loves them. This man like felt genuinely like that call from up above to right. like find somebody in jail. Cause the, he felt that was the reason he was going to like, that was his, that was his responsibility. Now that he was going to jail to find someone in you know, let them know. I, I don't know. I'm not a religious person. Never, I not never have been, but I am not a religious person now. But there's something to be said about having that strong of faith to right. try to find reason. I don't know. Yeah, I posted a prayer that he did, and it was just like it hits you in a different spot. Like I posted it on our Instagram. Where he's like, you know forgive me for not being able to take the help. I'm not used to it, you know? And I know his mother was, his, both of Terrence weren't the best. I want to say his mother had a drug issue as well. And it's just, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Especially because 50, that's not old enough to. Ah, bro, that's around the corner at this point. Right. It just sucks. That's a, and it, it it's a, part of my growing up that's gone and that happens unfortunately as we're getting older more and more it is yeah that's a conversation i've had to have multiple times um with people that take death a lot harder than i do uh that like you're gonna have to get real used to it real quick because we're approaching a time in which people are gonna start dropping off that are important to us or, or important to us as kids there's so, times where I see somebody and I'm like, man, I'm going to be really sad when I mean, we know the I get one that, that we're all thinking that's coming eventually and we can't say the name because if we speak it out into the universe, it's going to be bad. So word. Comment down below if you know which one we're talking about. Um, and then knock on wood because if that fucking angel passes because of you. Anyways. Um, yeah. No, I mean... The- that's all. I just wanted to give a little talk about him. It's not like he'll be gone from memory because yeah. people are still going to use that fucking song. I know that. X is going to give it to everybody all the time. And what aggressively that is, is the chills. no prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I don't know. I always like in talking about people post death, it is important to not just sling mud, but I think it's also important to remember that they like, I feel like sometimes we idolize people. And so I guess that's why I brought up the jail thing. Sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, he wasn't, he was far. So there was a TikTok that I checked (laughs) out and on this TikTok, 
this girl was like, this is what my boyfriend's been doing since he found out about DMX uh, passing away. And he was just in front of a TV and it was DMX's song. And he's just word for word, just going at it, like having a good time. And I commented like, oh, your boyfriend, can your, oh, I think it was her husband. I was like, can your husband and I be friends, please? And some guy was like, well, he's homophobic. And my profile picture has like the Black Lives Matter fist. And he was like, so you either need to change that Black Lives Matter fist or um, something else. And I was like, what? Why can't I just be sad? Because this, this, this man was far from perfect. And I'm sure he was far from perfect all the way to the end, just like we'll all be. People but, still be listening to Michael Jackson. I think everybody's done with R. Kelly, though. <sighs> poor R. Kelly, man. I mean, not poor R. Kelly, but I don't know. His music was not terrible. I, You know what's funny is... Uh, He's got like two songs I like. Not to get super distracted, but Dio Hughley was like, my wife and I danced to that at our wedding. What, am I supposed to just ignore the song now? Like, that was our song. What do you want me to do? I'm like, yeah, he made a lot of beautiful music. Unfortunately, he was a terrible fucking person. But that's fucking... Everybody mind of the people who are terrible <laughs> fucking people. Right. You gotta tell I me I know. can't enjoy the fucking uh, uh, Bill Cosby show now? <laughs> What's so unfortunate is the people who are like that pushed. Okay, so the guy who played um, Aaron Byrne and Hamilton, Burr. yeah, Burr, yeah, and he also was in One Night in Miami. His name, yeah. yeah, I know. He he was like that show molded me. It showed me that this black family can be successful and do right, and, and it's unfortunate that it gets that tainted fucking smell all over it of this I, fucking terrible person jesus man i think that the most important thing to take away from any of these is that like no matter how shitty the person is if that particular property did good for a community like recognize that like don't get me wrong i don't think any of dmx's music was like it didn't move someone to fucking become super successful but it also helped people work out a lot of aggression and and like I don't know. Hear that there's people dealing with shit, right? And that's important. I'm, I'm I th- gonna fucking I'm gonna fucking send you that uh, "Who We Be" song. Well, I think like, <clears throat> um, fucking what's his name? Logic has a song about the suicide fucking hotline. Like knowing that there are other people and like famous people going through stuff that that helps, right? It just does, and so. Hearing people going through these struggles, knowing that you're not the only one. I mean, again, do they do bad things sometimes? Yeah. Yes. Not all of them are good people. Ray Lewis did, uh, you know, leave a club and then someone did die that had to happen to have an altercation with him. But yep. did he also put up a lot of numbers? Yeah. <laughs> did he inspire? I, I, the numbers isn't as big of a deal, but did he inspire a fuck ton of youth? and help push them to do things and was he ever actually found guilty no and you know what i think that that my personal opinion as a ravens fan i think that that is what if you look he had that moment in his life and then never a moment like that ever again never again he got his shit together and he has done nothing but spread positivity in the world since then uh why can't i remember his name right now ray the Let running back. Rice. Ray Rice. He didn't get a second chance. In fairness, he got caught on video and it was real bad. But Well, oh yeah. And it's not like he... I didn't see him going out and trying to make anything better. Maybe that would have changed the opinions. You're right. I, I, but I mean, there's... We're really going off on a tangent here and I'm sorry. I really shouldn't have gone down this road. But like, um, I think about Michael Vick a lot. Like, I think... He did try to turn it around, and he didn't do nearly as heinous of something as some people have done. Dog. And he served his time, which as a country, we say, if you serve your time, we're good. Like, you paid your debt. And then he comes back, and we just fucking rail him every chance we get. And he's still a phenomenal player. Like, he still could put put down on the field, and they just wouldn't let him. I, man, I get so aggravated with that one especially because two years there are people who kill other people and don't get two fucking years 
This man got two years, paid out the two years. Phil- Philly, of all cities, which I didn't think was going to happen, ended up bringing him in. And it's it's, and then it wasn't until he started playing well that people kind of backed off. It's just like uh, Kobe when Kobe got in his little thing. If he there was a there was a Dave Chappelle joke where he was like, if he didn't play as well as he did, they would have been like that motherfucker's guilty. Yeah, but because he kept playing well and like it was like everybody just kind of backed off. It's it's unfortunate because Kobe was like. They completely wiped that off. They were like, "This, this is like he's lying. He's, they're full of shit." But it doesn't matter. At that point, Sprite had dropped him. You know what I mean? Everybody had abandoned him. All because and there's still people to this day that refuse to believe that he could possibly be innocent. That he right. that like so and and you know that that unfortunately when it gets to like the allegations of sexual assault and rape and stuff like that, it, it's a real dicey topic because like. You don't want to have victims feel like they can't come forward. Right. But at the same time, you don't want people just coming out saying that that's happening because it can. People have done that. There's only two people that can definitively say if it did or didn't happen. The right. two people there. Well, and again, it goes back to I mean, I don't want to get into a whole thing about the judicial system, but like, look, unfortunately, it may not be the best system in the world. It's fucked over a lot of people, but there's one thing that we keep like consistently saying is like, that is the system. The system is your peers are going to find you either guilty or innocent. If they find you innocent, you're good. If they find you guilty, serve your time. You're good after that. But instead, if you're found innocent and uh, the public opinion feels that you are guilty, you're guilty. Like mm-hmm. I, I, to this day, I'm, I am a huge Kobe Bryant fan. And to this day, I still get told all the time that I support a rapist. Yeah. It's I, there's because, the, I, what am I supposed to say to that? Or how many people, oh yeah, we're really off the rails. How many people <laughs> like are accused of something and then the internet just fucking lays into them and they end up killing themselves yeah. because nobody, nobody cares. As soon as they get a, a scent of you, being guilty it's a wrap for you i've always had that fear i have (coughs) and you know it's a lot of it is yourself but a lot of it's not a lot of it can be taken out of your hands you if you're in the wrong place at the wrong fucking time and someone arrests you for doing something what if they go up to your job and arrest you you know in a non-covid world where you would be at work they go in there and they arrest you for some kind of crime Oh, you're done. There's yeah. nothing you can do Doesn't outside matter. of some people's eyes. You're done. Absolutely. Anyway. One, one Anyways. Um, yeah, I told the guy, I was like, look, I support Black Lives Matter. I was like, DMX passed away. That's sad. I can, I'm not homophobic. I can have all these different feelings. You can't tell somebody else how they're going to feel about a certain situation. Yeah. DMX passed away. That's a sad thing. He was only 50. That's a sad thing. He was homophobic. That's a sad thing. It's unfortunate that he was. If he still was. Again, like we talked about, it could definitely super not be, or he definitely could have super been. I haven't seen a recent interview about him. I'm sure with the world that we live in right now, if if he had said, I fucking hate gays, I would have heard about it. It would have came up. He would have been on the feed. I don't know. I, people love when someone passes away. People love to fucking try to bring them down. I don't get it. Specifically, um, unfortunately, specifically black men. I was gonna say black men. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, no, it, it, f- fuck. It is what it is. Like it, every time. I mean, we're really not gonna get into this. Never mind. I just. Yeah, I didn't mean for this episode. No, this episode yeah. was supposed to be just talk about, you know, the good times with DMX. I might make two episodes out of this. I just... Um, I'm passionate about it, dog. It's no, it, I, it, it, no, I mean, it is 100%. You think about, like, the fucking people dying around the country and shit. Like, I mean, obviously the easiest example is George Floyd at this point. The moment George Floyd died, fucking everybody's like, yeah, he had drugs. He was an asshole. He was a terrible person. Fucking, uh, you know, uh, white guy gets you know, arrested for murder, and we're like, nah, he's a good guy. He's a family man. I never expected that. Like, it just sucks. 
Yeah. And I mean, I can only speak so much on it because. Sorry, guys. But what? I'm only a listener. I'm just now finding this out. That's fair. I guess. I mean, if you just looked at our artwork, sometimes I can be uh, seen as the same complexion <laughs> as Cleve. Though, no, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm half Asian. You'd never know it, right? And so, you know, this is I. I as shitty as the phrase is, lucked out that I look white and don't have to deal with some of it. So, DMX had passed away. That's DMX sad. did pass away. It was sad. We're both biracial, and his music will be remembered. And for some reason, I'm eating Taco Bell. Did you blend it up and put it in the cup? No, it's a little <laughs> thingy. I'm good. just saying, you were like, I'm eating Taco Bell. Yep. Mm, uh, oh, you a, could just see the drink, logo. Sir. I know. Um, uh, but no, let us know what your guys' favorite song, movie, thing moment that uh, DMX did. You guys can let us know in the comments down below. You guys can always reach out to us through our social media to let us know other topics you want to hear about. If you want to tell me to fuck off and stop derailing every conversation we have, um, at this point, you know, whatever. Uh, we have a we have a peel box if you want to send us stuff to open. If you want to send me. You know, pictures of eyes cut out because you hate me. I get it. I get it, guys. Um, we'll just be excited for fan mail. What's the social media so you can reach out to us at, Cleve? Uh, we have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter that are all Friendship Supreme, except Twitter has no eyes in the word friendship. All eyes typically make it to the YouTube channel. You go to YouTube.com and just search Friendship Supreme. We also have a Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Friendship Supreme, where you can with a dollar if you and a friend get together it could be 15 cents each and all proceeds will go back into the podcast to try to make everything great for you guys i've been michael this is cleave <laughs> that was so good i can't compete with that how i didn't <laughs> perfect